All right, so this is the Edison Motors service truck we just got. Uh, we just spent the last week kind of going through it, painting up the body. We're gonna have to paint the cab a little later. We have a cutout E on the back here. Actually, my dad made this. A little custom cutout Edison E. We put some LED lighting. This thing glows bright red. You will not be able to miss, if you're traveling behind this thing at night, you'll know you're following the Edison service truck. Of course, we have a five ton high ab on it. Uh, we got an old welder on the back, works perfectly. We've actually been using it here to weld up some I-beams for a little project. So the crane works, we've been moving these I-beams around, placing them, welding them all up. It, like, it is so handy to have a service truck. Like, beautiful cabinets, these are all custom done. We got it sanded down to get ready for some painting, but yeah, beautiful tool cabinets. We got to get our toolbox and all that in here. I mean the main thing is that if one of our trucks breaks down on the road this Edison truck is gonna be the one that comes to rescue us and let's be honest all trucks break down we're building an experimental prototype our electric truck is gonna break down at some point or have some minor issues this is our girl to come fix it this truck is a 1969 w900 come have a look at the interior here You will see here that it is absolutely mint for its year. Like it still has the chrome on the uh, the cover for the heater, all the switches, the headliner is mint. All in all, I'm really impressed. This thing runs great. Uh, I left the lights on, so it's got a dead battery. Let's see the star. Yeah, I gotta charge the battery. But it does run good. The lights were worth leaving lights on because damn that tail light looks good. Oh, I'll try so and good. I'll try and throw a clip of that onto this footage here because I'll take I'll take your picture and Perfect. throw it up for uh, everyone to see. I'll show you the video too. Send you the video too. Nice. Yeah, honestly, this guy took really really good care of this truck. Look, this thing is just mint. It's beauty. Yeah, it really is, and it's already Edison blue, so <laughs> we don't have to worry about painting the interior. Old blue is great. But you know what's something about our fleet? I just realized now that saying, oh, go grab the 1969 Kenworth, no longer defines what truck it is. You need to be specific into which 1969 truck you're talking about because I mean, old blue right back there, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it. Um, yeah, that's also from 1969, but that's an LW923 and this is a W900, right? What are they actually? W923. So this is a, right, because it wasn't a W900 until the 73, I think. But this is a W923. That is an LW923. And I'll show you one of the differences here. If we have a look at the front. So the W9 meant fiberglass. So you have a look at this fender, the hood. It's all fiberglass. This was just their standard model. LW stood for logger W900 because they were made for loggers back in the day. Let's go have a look at that one. So this is the LW923. It still has the same needle nose hood, but the difference is, is that the fenders are separate on here. It's a fiberglass fender, but the hood is actually metal. And it's got a butterfly hood. That one hood tilts up. This one has... butterflies opens up like that I'm not exactly sure why uh, loggers got a different hood and they went with butterfly instead of a traditional all I can think of is uh, uh, back in the day for the self loaders the self loaders used to reach out they would have their grapple hooked onto the front of the truck you couldn't tilt the hood forward and also it has these big uh, moose bumpers on the front so obviously if you have a big metal bumper that's physically bolted into the frame rail there, you can't tilt the hood forward. So this bumper was tied in down there into the frame rails. That's the reason you really couldn't open the hood. They didn't want to hinge these down, so they just made it butterfly. Personally, I really love the butterfly style. You can see here on the service truck, we went through, cleaned up, sandblasted these frame rails. We painted the whole thing underneath. Undercarriage I like to do first. I refuse to have a truck that doesn't like, I will go through there. I will strip every piece of rust out of that, completely redo the frame rails. I'm gonna have a look at any electrical issues, any grounding issues, are any of my airlines worn out? Do valves need to be changed? 
And the perfect time to do that is when you're under there sandblasting, wire stripping the whole thing down. So this is really what we like to do when we get a truck is that whole thing. Sometimes it needs a cab off. This one was actually really good. We didn't need to take the cab off or anything. We just went through, cleaned it up, painted it. We'll get her out on the road all shined up. There's no welding truck that's not set up unless you got your bottles and all that so we can do our cutting and torching. And you know these toolbox were actually custom made in town by a guy here. Yeah, like everything was just handmade. These doors are solid. Like you're talking doors that are at least 30, 40 years old. And this is one of the most solid toolboxes I've ever found. Like there's no rust anywhere. You expect your corners to be rusted out? Nothing. He's got strategic drain holes to let the water drain. It's all been coated, it's protected. Absolutely fantastic. And then yeah, the little Hi-Ab is by far, this is one of the handiest things. Plus it has a giant ass air compressor. Have a look at the size of this air compressor. We can actually do our full sandblasting with this now. It's actually mechanically driven off the transmission. <laughs> a giant mechanically driven air compressor, a five ton crane, a welder, acetylene bottles, and a full running truck. We bought this for $10,000 and that is one of the best 10 grand I've ever spent. Of course, aside from old blue, but. You know, it's just nuts actually when you think about it. This whole truck, if you were to spec this up, brand spanking new, brand new W900 welder, crane truck, huge air compressor, custom boxes, You'd be looking at about 250 for the truck and 100 grand for the rig up. This is a $350,000 truck. We got it for $10,000, everything works. And so what, we gotta spend a week working on it with three, four guys. Like, this is exactly why going with older trucks that you keep, you maintain, keep on the road is hands down the way to go. We saved $340,000.